Meat Boy is under the spell of some type of vegan demon. He has been hypnotized by a succubus. That has probably blocked me on Instagram and will never watch this video. But the point is, we are making vegan cookies today. And if, uh, if I told you guys this a year ago or someone even told me this a year ago, I would probably think they were crazy. Uh, so there's a couple reasons these cookies end up being vegan. One, I'm tired of getting ripped off by these Amish farmers for high quality butter, uh, you know, milk, as well as the pasture raised farm eggs. It's just too much money every week. Two, you know, coconut does have antimicrobial properties. It's what I've been using lately in a lot of my meals. And number three, I found that these cookies digest very easily. They don't cause me any issues. Number four, very affordable in the context of buying the high quality local ingredients. Our main component, the flour, is just regular organic all-purpose flour. The ingredients on this read as organic wheat flour and organic malted barley flour. The only thing you want to be really careful about is to avoid the iron fortified, the B vitamin fortified flours that are making Americans very, very sick. It'll say it on the label. And also if you're purchasing a processed food or cookie or something that is already made, it will say fortified iron on the ingredient list. That is the major thing to avoid. The reason we're going organic is you know, to reduce the agrochemicals, the herbicides, the pesticides, the fungicides, insecticides, the negatives that can be in the food. It's still not perfect, but it's far better than what the average person is eating. For the fat component, as opposed to butter, I'm using just organic refined coconut oil. I found it's easier to digest. It's not as likely to cause dysbiosis. And this is also much cheaper than raw butter from the local farm. But I will say the butter tastes a lot better. Uh, for the chocolate, this is where it really matters. You wanna make sure to have something that tastes good because if you put this cookie recipe together and the chocolate chips aren't sweet enough or they're like kind of bitter or they don't have the right melting point, it's gonna ruin the cookie. Uh, I found that extra semi-sweet chocolate chips work. Usually I just get the generic store brand, uh, but this is about 55% cacao. The ingredients on here should just be cacao beans, cane sugar, cocoa butter, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we also do have some organic bittersweet chocolate baking wafers, uh, but I do prefer using the chips. Sometimes I'll throw a few of these in here and I will regret it because it's a little too bitter in the context of a cookie. Uh, speaking of bitter, uh, our contrasting sweet ingredients are sugar. And normally I use the nature's glucose, but I've been eating so many of these cookies every day that uh, I forgot to pick up some more of the nature's glucose from uh, the store. So I have several options that you guys can use. I have organic coconut sugar, I have organic regular cane sugar, and I also have a pure glucose powder uh, that is actually organic. And the nature's glucose is about 75% glucose and it's raw. This is not raw, it's actually 99% glucose, pretty much pure glucose. Let me know if you guys would be interested in this. The only reason you know, I haven't sold it as a product is because you know the shipping is very expensive to get it and um, I don't know if it's uh, worth me buying you know 5,000 pounds of it if I'll ever be able to sell it but I do have access to an organic 100% glucose powder if you guys are interested definitely let me know in the comments below and I can probably get it for you guys I think it's gonna be at least eight to ten dollars a pound though and instead of eggs for our liquid component we're using organic light coconut milk just some more coconut, some more antimicrobial properties. And then for the seasonings, we have just regular sea salt and some vanilla powder. To get started off, we need one cup of coconut oil. So I'm going to melt that in our pan here. For the coconut milk, we want three quarters of a cup. Now I have a couple different sugars here and I'm low on them, so I'm actually gonna mix them. So we got about a quarter cup of the regular cane sugar about half a cup of the coconut sugar, about three quarters of a cup of the pure glucose powder. And this is a lot of sweetener for a typical cookie recipe, but 
the glucose doesn't really taste that sweet. You know, the sweeter component of the sugar is the fructose. And I'll eyeball about two teaspoons of vanilla powder and about a teaspoon of salt. So I like mixing the sugar, the oil, and the milk together with the seasoning, and then just making sure it's really well incorporated before adding the flour. Then we want about one and two thirds cups of the flour. So this is about the perfect texture we're looking for. It's, it's not that dry and it's not that runny. So now you add however as many chocolate chips as you like, usually around three quarters of a cup is plenty. Now ideally you let this sit for at least a couple of hours, let the flour really hydrate. And what I normally do is leave it on my counter for a day, two or three days, and I'll progressively you know, take some cookies out every day and have a few. So the flour you know, continues to settle, reduce the anti-nutrient content, and the flavors develop. So it's all around better if you let this sit around for a little while. So here I just have a baking sheet pan with some parchment paper and an ice cream scoop just to portion out the cookies properly. And since I have two or three cookies with each meal and I eat one or twice a day, I usually try to make around five cookies at once. I, I don't cook the whole batch. So I'll just take an ice cream scoop of the dough. I'll portion it to about that much and then I'll, I'll take it out of the scoop and put it on the tray. Now as this dough sits for several days, it, it will tighten up and it won't be as loose and liquidy. So keep that in mind here. I'm just going to kind of pat down the cookies a little bit because when we put these in the oven, they'll spread out anyway and we want more even cooking. Kind of make like a little tiny circle in the center of the cookie with your finger because that's where it usually takes the longest to cook. So if we make it thinner there, it'll cook quicker. And now we're just going to pop this in the oven at 375 for however you like your cookies. You know, I mean, I would eat this cookie dough pretty much raw. Um, you could get them nice and brown and crisp on top. You could just barely cook them through. It's completely up to you. So it's 8.55 now. We'll check on this in a little bit. So it's been almost 25 minutes from an oven that was not preheated. So realistically, I would say about 15 minutes at 375. And there we have our cookies at what I would say is the minimal cooking temperature. So these are gonna digest a little bit better, a little bit easier than something that, you know, you really get brown and dark and crispy, but the difference probably isn't that much. The main thing to consider here is when you cook it for the extra five or 10 minutes to brown it, it kind of ruins the chocolate in my opinion. So I would try both, see which one you like more. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> so we have our professional taste tester. Hi. She's gonna try the cookies because I am fasting today. So I guess we could kind of, these are really nice and moist on the inside. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy these later. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. Mmm. That's how delicious that you can actually see the melted chocolate chips. The best is the melted chocolate. So again, if you cook these longer to brown and crispy, that chocolate isn't really gonna be nice and melted. It kind of dries out and the fat separates. Uh, so this is kind of like the perfect temperature, but since you're not using baking powder, baking soda, the cookies are really dense and thick. So they're gonna be kind of almost really raw and loose on the inside, but it's still delicious. Mm -hmm. No, Gina, no more. Mm, that's so good though, I could eat 50 of them. Well, Gina, you just had breakfast 20 minutes ago, so that's enough food for now. So thank you guys for joining us today. Maybe we will have these on Frankie's Free Range Foods sometime in the future, as well as an animal-based variant. Uh, I don't know, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but you guys can check out frank-stefano.com for Frankie's Free Range Meat, Frankie's Free Range Foods, all that stuff. If you can please leave a comment down below, drop a like on the video, and share it on social media if you can. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everybody. These cookies are good. Mm.